Good morning church family, Pastor Brett here and to visitors welcome to our daily devotional channel here at Rockhampton Baptist. Yesterday we looked at how the gospel had the power to change someone from enemy to advocate. As the gospel spread out it caused a great deal of social upheaval. The most incredible one was the crossing of social boundaries. It's a shame that throughout history the Christian church has often been accused of bigotry and accused of being racist because at its core, right at the beginning, the church was the one to cross these social boundaries and to break them down. No boundary existed in the first century stronger than the division between the Jews and the Gentiles. To a Jew, the thought that a non-Jew could possibly be included in God's salvation story was a horrible thought. But the salvation that comes through the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ was meant for everyone, regardless of race, regardless of background or social standing, as the first disciples were about to find out. Let me take you to Acts chapter 10, an encounter that the Apostle Peter had with a local called Cornelius. I'll start at verse 24. They arrived in Caesarea the following day. Cornelius was waiting for them and had called them together, his relatives and his close friends. As Peter entered his home, Cornelius fell at his feet and worshipped him. But Peter pulled him up and said, Stand up, I'm a human being just like you. So they talked together and went inside where many others were assembled. Peter told them, You know it is against our laws for a Jewish man to enter a Gentile home like this, or to associate with you. But God has shown me that I should no longer think of anyone as impure or unclean. So I came without objection as soon as I was sent for. Now tell me why you were sent for me. Cornelius replied, Four days ago I was praying in my house about the same time, three o'clock in the afternoon. Suddenly a man in dazzling clothes was standing in front of me. He told me, Cornelius, your prayers have been heard and your gifts to the poor have been noticed by God. Now send messengers to Joppa and summon a man named Simon Peter. He is staying in the home of Simon the Tanner, who lives near the seashore. So I sent for you at once, and it was good of you to come. Now we are all here, waiting before God to hear the message that the Lord has given you. Then Peter replied, I see very clearly that God shows no favoritism. In every nation, he accepts those who fear him and do what is right. This is the message of the good news for the people of Israel that there is peace with God through Jesus Christ, who is Lord of all. And he goes on to explain a little bit more, and I'll flip down to verse 44. Even as Peter was saying these things, the Holy Spirit fell upon all who were listening to the message. The Jewish believers who came with Peter were amazed that the gift of the Holy Spirit had been poured out on the Gentiles too. So Cornelius was a Gentile, Peter was a Jew, and with everything that Peter knew in all his upbringing and understanding, the Gentiles could not possibly share in the promise of salvation unless they became Jewish. And even then there were great restrictions. Yet here we have an example of a Gentile who had been visited by an angel, endorsed by the Apostle Peter, and affirmed by the Holy Spirit. Yes, salvation was for the Gentiles too. The cross of Jesus Christ was a cosmic event. An event of salvation not restricted to one race or one class of people, but for anyone from any nation, class or creed that would follow Jesus Christ and put their faith in him. 
Under early Christianity, much of the social distinctions within that group were slowly broken down. Slaves fellowshiped with free men. Women were given great standing. Some were even prophets. The lowly were encouraged that God loved them and the rich shared with the poor. No matter what corruption may have existed in the church throughout history, you can be sure that at its core, Christianity breaks down barriers because Jesus Christ himself broke down barriers. The Gospel C assumes that we are all broken and all in need of a saviour. The Gospel is a great leveller in this. No one is more deserving of it. No one can earn it. It is simply a matter of putting our faith and trust in the cross of Christ and the resurrection from the dead. And it's that common faith that makes us a part of the same family, the same kingdom, no matter what our background. So today, everyone you meet, everyone you pass in the street, your neighbours, they're all important, every single one of them. There is no one that exists that is not worth your time. All of them are noticed by God. Maybe we should too. Let me pray. Father, we are so thankful that we are included in this salvation plan. That we do not have to change cultures. We do not have to abandon our families. We do not have to turn our backs on who we are because the gospel is free for all. We thank you for doing the work that we couldn't do and I pray your richest blessings on everyone who believes this message through Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, keep walking with God. Keep talking with him. Listen to him as you read the Bible and as he does speak back to you. Make sure you trust and obey. Look for opportunities to bless others and we'll see you soon.